So I don't talk as much about streaming films as you might think, or as I would like to. Mostly it's because I don't have that much time to watch streaming films amid trying to see movies in the theater and trying to see the stacks, the voluminous volume, as it were, of physical media that I get. But I did watch one last night and I thought it was really good. From 2021, this is Django and Django, Sergio Corbucci Unchained. This is a documentary uh, by Luca Ray, R-E-A, Re, Ray. I always pronounce the names wrong. Just give it as a standard that if I pronounce the name wrong, it wasn't out of disrespect. It was just out of simple uh, ignorance in the nicest sense of the word. So this is a documentary about film director, Italian film director, Sergio Corbucci, and predominantly really almost exclusively about his, his Westerns, his spaghetti Westerns that he made. And uh, Tarantino calls him the second best director of spaghetti Westerns. So. He said, and that's not a bad thing. So there has to be a second. You know, there can be a lot of greats. And if, you, if you're not the great, being the next best great is still great. So this features heavily Quentin Tarantino talking about Corbucci, and whose films clearly have influenced his own. And But you also get people who worked with Corbucci. You get uh, Franco Nero, who's always great to see and great. You get Ruggiero Diodato and uh, a lot of vintage footage. Let's talk about that, shall we? I'm going to anyway. The vintage footage. You get clips from all the films that are being discussed and they look perfect. So uh, some of these are, have been released on Blu-ray, maybe a lot of them, some stateside, some not, but all the transfers look amazing. It makes me want to watch every one of these films, some of which I haven't heard of. They talk a lot about uh, Compañeros and they talk about uh, The Mercenary and they talk about The Great Silence and they talk about Django and a lot of others too, but those are the ones that kind of keep getting touched upon. It's divided into chapters where they talk about the phases of Corbucci's career and aspects of what he brought to the films that he made and his technique. And it is, as I said, a mix of people who admire Corbucci, like Tarantino, and people who worked extensively with Corbucci, like Nero and Diodato and some other people. So you see a lot of clips, you see a lot of stories, you hear a lot of stories. It is in uh, English and Italian. If Tarantino is talking, it's in English. Yeah, some of the clips are in English, but most of it is in Italian, but that's cool. It's, it's all fascinating. And you get, uh, to me, what was the most fascinating thing about this, or the most uh, surprising thing about this, is you get a ton of home movie footage shot on the set of these films. So, and then the transfers, I used to do this partly for a living is transferring people's home media and home movies. So I'm always really impressed with a really good like eight millimeter Super 8 transfer, which I'm presuming is what these were. I think from where the sprocket hole was, I think it was eight millimeter. Um, they look so good. They're really nicely transferred and it's speed corrected. So it's Corbucci on the set. It's, it's a lot of footage. It's uh, the actors on the set horsing around. It's scenes that you may recognize from a film but shot from a different angle on on as a home movie or rehearsals that were shot and they're all weaved in you know perfectly chronologically appropriately and, and to counter counterpoint what they're not counterpoint to illustrate what they're saying and uh, it was just fascinating i loved this this thing could have been twice as long it's only 77 it's not even 80 minutes and um, I don't know well enough that this, it feels like it could have been like a really good supplement on a video release of uh, Django Unchained from Tarantino at some point. I'm not sure if it was, or part of a Corbucci release overseas. I'm not sure if this was originally produced to be a home video supplement or a standalone. And I don't know if this has been released on a home video supplement. I just found it on Netflix and that's where I watched it. So that's what I will say to you. If you are US based, this is pretty easy to see on Netflix. And uh, Tarantino, of course, talks a lot, but that's okay, because if he's talking about movies, I'm, I'm happy to hear it. And he really loves and knows Corbucci, so he talks a lot about that. And something that's really cool if you're a Tarantino fan, and if, like me, you're a big fan of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which I love, I never get tired of that movie. Uh, this film opens with Tarantino talking about Rick Dalton and how he went on to work with Corbucci. And it's Tarantino just spinning more untold tales of the world of Rick Dalton and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I don't remember if this, what he says in this documentary wound up being in the Once Upon a Time in Hollywood novelization, which is like, side note, well worth reading if you have, if you love the movie because it's almost entirely different from the movie. It's almost like filling in the gaps between everything you see in the film. Uh, so there's this, it's animated. Interestingly, it's like painted, it's like painted art, but so, subtle limited animation they used to call it in the old uh, marvel cartoon days 
of Rick Dalton meeting Corbucci and, you know, trying to talk to him about making movies in Italy and all this other stuff. It was funny and fascinating. And even though it was totally fictional, it does have insight into how those films were made and what Corbucci was like as a person. So uh, very fascinating footage, interesting videotape footage. There's some early, and again, I'm a format junkie. So like there's an old music video, let's call it, of some Italian group doing a, a cover of Bang Bang that shot, I think, on one of the Spaghetti Western sets, but it's black and white, home, but it's video, not film. There's video of Corbucci being interviewed about something. It's very funny, it's fascinating, it's uh, borderline touching at times. If you love Spaghetti Westerns, like I, I love Spaghetti Westerns, it's a great insight into that. And I could have done, this could have been a series as far as I was concerned. Each of these chapters could have been an hour and I would have been happy with it. So available now on Netflix is Django and Django. I have to look up to get the full title, Sergio Corbucci Unchained. Oh, and they do talk about Django Unchained a little bit. See, that's what, okay, but I, well, I'll keep talking. I, I thought that that's what this was going to be. When I saw that title, I'm like, oh, this was some kind of a, sort of a puff piece to promote Django Unchained when it came out. And it's going to be, you know, all about Django Unchained and the making of it and a little bit about the guy who inspired it. That's not the case. This has a little tiny bit about Django Unchained toward the end where Tarantino says how Corbucci's films inspired Django Unchained, but it is by no means a puff piece promo for that film. It's really all about Sergio Corbucci. So once again, in case you missed it the four other times I said it, Django and Django, Sergio Corbucci Unchained, streaming on Netflix.